Farouk, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Michael. My pleasure. Tell us about your company, what you guys do. Find us on an e-commerce platform. Uh, we work with offline retailers. Uh, we work pretty much with all the large retailers in the country. We take the, their store inventory, bring it all together, uh, and expose it onto multiple places. Uh, we started with find our e-commerce platform, and now our, the inventory on our platform is available for as, as a B2B business, as available an open API for marketplaces. The decision to move to the cloud and then to AWS, how did you guys move that way? In 2012, AWS was the obvious choice for building on the cloud. Uh, when we started building in the first year, uh, the free tier of AWS allowed us to experiment and you know, play around uh, and see what works for us, what doesn't work for us. Uh, a few years after that, you know, uh, we, got, uh, we got into AWS Activate, uh, where they gave us you know, free credits to play around uh, and build services. So, because they gave us a large budget of $100,000 a year, we were not only able to roll out our services, but also you know, build a lot of experimental products on managed services that existed in AWS. What did it allow you to do as a business that you couldn't do before? So, one of the challenges while you're building a startup is you know, getting DevOps engineers. And, and that's a talent you know, that's not easy to uh, come by. Uh, now, either you're going to train your engineers to do it, or you know, find a cloud partner like AWS who kind of takes care of it for yourself. Like last year when we were running massive sales, we were able to autoscale a lot of our infrastructure because autoscale was available for all the managed services that we were using. Uh, and because autoscale allows us not to you know, worry about over-provisioning our servers, only we provision it when the peak traffic comes, uh, that allows us to save cost also, that allows us to save engineering time as well. You guys were a startup and you were growing, but um, when did you realize like, that autoscaling and those kinds of things were necessary for your business and your growth? So last year, around, just around this time, we were having the Find October birthday month, and we had run a massive campaign of acquiring users as well as you know attracting a lot of supply on a platform. So we acquired close to three to three and a half million users. Three and a half million. Yes, and we acquired like a million user in a in a day in a span of twenty four hours. Wait, how how does that happen in a day? So uh, we created a viral system where you know people could refer other users, and the more they referred, you know, the more they could kind of uh, use it on our platform, and that's how you know. Uh, it kind of went crazy and we were not even expecting that sort of a growth. Uh, at peak, we were able to support 1 million requests uh, a minute uh, and it was all you know, flawlessly done uh, on AWS and we were able to autoscale as much as we wanted and then as, as the traffic went away, it quickly went back to normal. You mentioned managed services. Um, so one of them obviously is autoscaling, but, but how, how do you think about adopting them you know, in the past and also today and going forward? What do you need to put to work um, to help you guys do your work? When we looked at managed services, right, we looked at a, across the layer. So there is the infrastructure managed services, then the database managed services, and then there are services which come off the box that we can use to make our, our engineering better. A few tools like we use, so DynamoDB is one of the managed services that we use. Uh, that's something we like. Uh, EKS is something that we, uh, we like. Uh, we also uh, now starting experimenting with a lot of new tools that are uh, available and then that's then they're kind of, kind, kind of abstracted at the application level like Athena is one of those tools that we really like. Uh, we are trying to experiment with SageMaker this year. Uh, we are trying to experiment with uh, Amazon Forecast this year. So if you look at from the value chain, uh, you know, we want everything to move to a stage where, you know, it's almost like one click infrastructure. Think about the cloud and where you guys were in 2012, where you guys are today. What do you think that you guys will need going forward? You know, from AWS. I think for us, uh, from an AWS uh, data center perspective, for the longest time, AWS wasn't available in Bombay, uh, but now they've kind of bought it uh, in Bombay. Uh, but the service parity that exists in the North America region and that exists in, in Bombay, there's like a big difference. A lot of the services are not available in Bombay, plus as well as the number of uh, instances or number of flavor of services available in Bombay are kind of not at par. So we would ideally want to see that parity uh, come up much faster. We would also want to have another data center in the country uh, as a point of failure. Uh, right now there's only Mumbai and so we, a lot of our servers are actually in Oregon or in Singapore and things like that. So that's something we would really want. If you don't have that initial success, do you have advice for other startup entrepreneurs about how to build that team and make it solid from the beginning? What we look at when we do that is that at least one founder needs to be a full-time you know, techie. Right? If, we, if you do not know uh, what needs to be built, you would not build it. And that's why we, whenever, whenever we look at teams, we look at the you know, have core competency of the business that you want to build or, or have that strong ability to learn it quickly uh, so that you can build it. Farooq, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ankh.